So it's not very interesting to just work with literal values because uh, we just type them as the programmer. They can't change. That's not very uh, dynamic. So what we probably would always want to do in our program is establish some variables. Um, and what that lets us do is make these little containers that have names and they can hold values. We can set what the values are or we can ask the user to type in some information to our program. And we can store what they type inside of those containers um, and those containers we called variables. Um, so to have a variable in C++, you need two pieces of information. You need a type which will specify how much memory the computer sets aside, how big the container is, and you need a, an identifier or a name for the variable. And there's some rules about what you can name variables. Um, let's talk about the type first. So our, uh, our kinds of information we might want to store are something like an integer, so like 120. Uh, maybe we want to store a decimal like 12 point. 8765. Okay, maybe we want to store a single character or key press from the keyboard like uh, the letter B. Maybe we want to store um, a word, so like programming. Okay, um, so these are kind of the various possibilities of what I might want to store inside of a container. And um, I've chosen these examples just to try to give you a visual. Um, of how big of space and memory we would need. So um, for an integer, we don't need a whole lot of space. Same thing for a single letter. Um, these things are obviously stored as ones and zeros in the computer, but um, if there's less information to translate to ones and zeros, it takes up less memory. So um, we have a type for integers and it's int, okay? Um, and we have a type for single letters and it's char. And both those guys are um, actually the same size in memory, and there's some weird stuff where we can translate back and forth between them. Um, we'll see that later on. Um, so they actually end up being sort of compatible types, but they are um, two types that we have available to us. Um, we also have for decimals a type called double. Okay, so that's for holding decimal values, and that's a much um, larger amount of memory than for integers. And then for strings, which you can imagine can be uh, one word or they could literally be a sentence, they could literally be a paragraph. That's a lot of room it takes up. Um, the type for those is string. Okay. Um, you'll notice string didn't turn blue. These three guys um, are considered uh, primitive types or built-in types. Um, and string is a slightly different thing called a class um, that we'll get into much later. Um, but for now, just know it's okay that it didn't turn blue. It's a slightly different kind of thing than our uh, other variable types. Okay. There's also, I'm just going to mention, a few little variations that you might see out there in the wild. Um, there's an alternate type for holding decimals called float. Um, sometimes you'll see that more in like older programs that are out there, but that basically is also something that can hold a decimal value. If you should see it, that's what that is. And there are two variations of integers, um, or actually I should say more than two. So there is a uh, short, if you need to save space, let's say you're coding like the front panel for a microwave oven and you don't have much memory at all, um, you might want to make your, your, storage space much smaller. Um, if you know your integer is not going to be very long at all, then you can use short. Um, alternatively, if you know you have a very long integer, then there's an alternative int type called long. Okay. And if you know your integer is really, really, really long, this is funny, the type is called long, long. Um, so those are some variants. Um, if you find yourself coding and this guy isn't storing the value, you'll tell that because your math will turn wonky. Um, then you might try switching to long. And if that's not good enough, um, you might try switching to long, long. Okay. So those are uh, types or data types for holding different kinds of values. So we have to tell the compiler up front what type of information we want. And then we have to choose an identifier or a name for the variable. Um, names are usually 
something that represents what the what the thing you're storing is. Um, you don't want to name them like X, Y, Z. That doesn't give any information. We want our program while you read it to be as close to English as possible so that if some other programmer who's looking at it or your poor teacher who's looking at it, um, they can know immediately what that thing is holding. Okay, so if I wanted to store someone's age, I would declare a variable um, called age and that would probably be a whole number. So I'm going to go with an int age. Um, so that itself on the line, this is a type. Here's my identifier. Um, this whole process that I just do, did is called declaration. So I'm declaring my variable. Okay. If I want to, and sometimes it's a good idea. Um, I can also, in addition to declaring my variable, I can initialize it on the same line. That means I give it a starting value. So um, for numerics, a lot of the time, I'll just initialize to zero. If I know this is a program about me, I can set it to my age. If it's a program about you, you can set it to your age. Um, but a lot of times, I'll just set this to zero, okay? If you know that you're going to immediately ask the user for this information um, and overwrite that value, there is no reason to initialize. If that variable doesn't get used till a little bit later and the first time it's used is in some kind of math expression, then it's a good idea to initialize it because otherwise it contains garbage and that will mess up your math, obviously. Okay. So there's a variable for age. Um, if I wanted to store my uh, GPA, that would probably be a double because it'll have a decimal and I'll call it GPA. Um, if I wanted to store my first name, that would probably be a string. Um, if I have something like first name where it's actually two words, I can't put a space in the name. So I have two options. I can go like this and use an underscore. Or um, what I usually do is I capitalize the first letter of the next uh, word and that's called camel case because it has a hump okay um, if I am going to set this equal to something I have to put quotation marks around that thing um, one thing to know with strings is they are not actually garbage um, in the beginning so if you don't initialize them they contain this and so you don't have to actually set them to anything um, maybe I have a char for my middle initial. Um, and you don't have to like totally write out a word because you don't want to make it too long because you're going to have to type it again and again in the program if you use it. Um, so you might actually want to do like abbreviations that are still obvious as to what it is. Like init is probably initial. That makes sense. Okay. Um, so that's how you declare variables. Now let's see, um, I want to show you a slightly different thing. If you know um, that there is a constant value, so for example, um, the value of pi, or like the maximum number of students allowed in a classroom, or if I'm thinking of the lab, um, the number of computers that I have, um, then instead of a variable, if that thing is never going to change in the program, I can declare a constant. And instead of making it inside the body of main, the um, the way that you do this is to go right above main but under using namespace standard and declare it here. So let's say I want to have um, the number of computers in my classroom represented. So I'll start um, by saying, okay, well, if I were going to make this a variable, um, it would be an integer because that's a it's a whole number of computers, um, and I probably want to name it computers. Um, now the difference in technique is when you name your constant, you use all caps. So I'm going to call this uh, computers, okay? And then since I'm saying this thing's going to be a constant, I want to give it a value immediately because I'm not going to be able to change it later. So in my classroom in 105, um, I have 34 computers, okay? And this is how it looks. So I'm having a whole number of computers. There's 34 of them. And there's one last step to turn this into a constant. I'm going to go on the front. And I'm going to write C-O-N-S-T, short for const. And now, even if I try to in here oops, set this equal to something else, it won't let me 
So I'm in effect by marking this constant, I'm protecting it um, from changes. It becomes illegal to change the value. Um, it's kind of like a nice reminder to yourself if your program's real long that this thing shouldn't change if you should try to. Um, it's not possible. And also now, whenever I want to talk about computers, instead of, say, using the number 34, I can actually write the word computers. Okay. So maybe I want to see, like, uh, if I have another class joining me, um, let's say I have like 200 students and I want to see uh, how many students that means are going to be sitting at each computer, then I can do math with these variables. And I'll run it, and this thing will figure out for me how many students need to be at each computer if there's 200 kids in the room, which is against fire code, I'm quite sure. But that would mean that five students have to share each computer. Okay. So once I make variables, and as long as I know they have values in them, I can use them in mathematical expressions. So that's a real quick intro to variables and constants.